bit easier as zookeepers. Now this this behaviour is called shape discrimination. It pretty much is uh, pretty self-explanatory when you see it. All Abel has to do for this one is simply come and touch his nose on his specific shape, which is the green cross that Keeper has Keeper Ant has in her hand there. So once he gets into the water and he hears the double whistle, if he touches his nose on that green cross, we want you to really go crazy for him. And I'll explain this behaviour a bit more later. Nice. For the next seal that's joining us, he's the largest seal that we have here at Seals for the Wild and we're heading a little bit further away from home. His name is Murphy and he's our California sea lion. loud hello and it seems him pretty well he's the largest seal as i mentioned he is weighing in just over 200 kilos and this is completely normal for the california sea lions they can easily reach weights of anywhere between 300 to 350 kilos depending on the individual and the time of year <laughs> but did you know you all have something in common with murphy have a look at your hand now have a look at murphy's front flipper Oh, that was a bit lazy there. There we go. <laughs> Believe it or not, you have the exact same bone structure in your hand as Murphy has in his flipper there. And although those flippers may look a little awkward for getting around on land, they allow eat seals like Murphy to move around much faster and easier than you may have thought. So let's see him go for a quick walk. <laughs> let's see, has he used all four flippers to make easy work of the cliff? But of course, being a sea lion, it's really in the water where we see these flippers at work. <laughs> now this behaviour here is known as bowing or porpoising, and it's a really impressive way for our seals to get around the ocean, catching a quick breath of fresh air while keeping up their speed. And this is really important when they're chasing down prey or trying to get away from predators. And all of our seals are amazing predators out there in the oceans. There's another really great predator that's important for a healthy ocean, but quite often misunderstood. Now, Murphy, which one am I talking about? <laughs> Shout it out if you know who he's trying to be. That's right. And <laughs> believe it or not, this isn't just Murphy's best shark impersonation. This is another natural behavior known as thermoregulation or sailing. Our seals have such impressive fur coats that are so good at keeping the heat trapped in their body that it's only the naked and hairless flippers that allow the heat back out again if they're ever trying to cool down or if they've had a big meal. I did mention that Murphy is the largest seal and that he's weighing just over 200 kilos. We've been able to see how powerful he is moving around the water. He's going to show off that a little bit more. So much strength in that upper body. Well, Murphy, you'd be very impressive as always. He's going to quickly wave goodbye before he heads our stage. Thank you very much, Murphy. Very impressive as always. He's doing really, really well. They're a beautiful species. You'll notice that he's also very cheeky and wants to go for the rope, even though he's not supposed to. <laughs> Typical three-year-old, very cheeky, always trying to push the limits, but also incredibly sweet and, of course, very smart. Now, as you've been able to see, part of preparing for our seals means teaching them all these behaviours. They're taught a range of behaviours. Some of them are small, like husbandry behaviours, where they participate in their daily health checks. We just saw Keeper Ange checking Moby's mouth. Our seals will hold their mouth open really comfortably so we can check out their dental hygiene and also make sure there's no problems going on inside there or any wounds. Now also getting Moby to present his flipper. As we saw earlier, our seals walk on their flippers, so sometimes they can get scratches or grazes. So it's important that we can check over those and also apply any medication if we need to as well. <laughs> now getting Moby to lie down on cue might seem like a pretty simple behaviour, but lying down and rolling over is actually a really vulnerable position for many animals to be in. But it allows us as zookeepers to be able to give them full body checks without, it making, without making it a stressful time. <laughs> so with all, all these husbandry behaviours, it's about taking out any negativity or stress that might happen when they're getting their health checks done. 
even important ones like when the vets or vet nurses have to come in to check them over. But some of the more fun and more complicated behaviours that we teach them are quite large. And this next one at Moby's Learning is a good example of that. So it's called a high bow, and so he's going to jump into the water and back out again to touch his nose on the boy being lowered in the middle of the pool. But to help with this, I need you all to give him the cue to jump. So on the count of three, I need you all to yell, jump Moby and throw your hands in the air. Okay, I think Moby's in position and that boy is lowered to the right area. So if you're ready, one, two, three. <laughs> Very impressive movie. Now, that is quite impressive. He's pretty big for a three-year-old. He's weighing in just over 70 kilos. And that's because as he gets older, he'll easily be able to reach weights of anywhere between 280 to 300 kilos as he reaches maturity. I think he's also going to demonstrate just how strong he is as well, just to show off. Nice work, Moby. Now you've been very cute as always, and of course cheeky, we wouldn't expect anything less from you, so he's going to go there with a good one. pulling the heads up. Thank you, Moby. Yeah, you can do that as he's moving around. He's definitely pretty cheeky. He's seven years old, and being a typical teenager, he really likes to push the boundaries. And he's never any trouble. This goes usually in the middle of it. <laughs> Thank you, Cisco. <laughs> so with a lot of our seals, they're incredibly playful and inquisitive, which is great for us as zookeepers because it means we can give them a range of toys to keep them both mentally and physically stimulated. Now, a lot of these toys are food-based toys, or we call it enrichment. And it's where we can hide their toys and the seals have to figure out how to get the fish out. Now a lot of them have their own little weird ways of getting it out, which is really interesting to watch because you never know how they'll figure out ways. They always try to push the boundaries and figure out something new. A lot of the times they get a little bit too rough when we have to create new toys. But it's really great for us to see that their brains are ticking over and thinking of exactly what they need to do to get their reward. Now this is also demonstrated out in the wild. As I mentioned, we are overfishing our oceans, so it's meaning that a lot of seals and marine animals are having to find other ways to get food. The seals are starting to realize that if they follow big fishing nets and fishing trawlers around and whip it around like we saw that Cisco was doing, they can quite often get a really cheap and it's not always a happy ending. The keeper and was able to help Cisco out of that one. And I think he's pretty proud of himself as always. Thank you very much, Cisco. Thank you for demonstrating another way that the seals... Oh, 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 oh. oh yes, I always have something else to say. <laughs> another threat that the seals are facing out there. Thank you very much, Cisco. And now we really thank you for joining us. Stay right where you are. Our seals and trainers are just about to come out to say their final farewells. But remember, next time you're shopping for seafood, ask for MSC and you can be a champion for the wild. A few of the keepers will be hanging around here for a few minutes after the show if you did have any questions that you wanted to ask. Other than that, we hope you have a great day here at Toronto Zoo and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.
say something about how we associate the use of tools with humans and primates, but this bird here, he did it himself, didn't he? Well, well done, Waru. <laughs> well, the, uh, the use of tools is, like I said, usually associated with humans and other primates, but it's pretty cool to see birds use tools as well. It was going to hit it with a rock, instead of just feet. But it does go to show that we may have a little bit more with birds and what we Since the owls moved in, 
Well, those rats moved out, and I can honestly say that that problem is relatively in the past. You could even say it's behind us. You have the opportunity to make connections with remarkable birds like the Andean Cock. Joining us on stage on three metres worth of wings is Panera. Now, Panera is a vulture, and as a vulture, this is exactly how she would feed out in the wild, sticking her head to the side of parties and gets all the juicy stuff inside. Now, eating the dead could be a pretty messy job, so she has a couple of adaptations that helps her out with this. One of which is that nearly bald-headed neck. It's not actually bald, it has small hair-like feathers on it. This means that any blood and guts that she get on her face dries the sun and simply flake them off. And this means she gets to stay really healthy herself. Now, unfortunately, in parts of the world, vulture populations have been declined by up to 99% for certain species over the last 10 years. And this means, unfortunately, diseases like anthrax and rabies have found their way into the human population. So we need to make sure we're out there looking after them so they can do their job of looking after us or they might just disappear. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Kanira. Now, in Australia, we are very fortunate. We have a huge diversity of bird life. We have nearly 800 different species of birds that call Australia home. And just over 50 of those are the parrots means for most of us here we're pretty lucky because all we have to do is walk into our own backyard and we can witness the beautiful birds that really are all around us. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> They'll be here. <laughs>
Thanks for coming down to the QBE 3 Flight Birds. We hope you guys have a great day today.